Commander Low coming at you again with another video. So um, we, the crisis team, the Geek Pollution team, are trying to do a little bit of an introductory uh, day of sorts. So I have some questions that they have posed to me that hopefully will help them get to know me a little bit better and also all of you guys watching get to know me a little bit better. So my first question comes from Logan and it's what possessed you to finally start buying comics regularly? Well, I, I had read and was kind of keeping up with the actual like volumes of The Walking Dead um, for quite a while, and I had also read Watchmen, um, just because I'm the type of person that likes to read the source material before I see a movie. When that movie came out, I wanted to read it. Um, but it wasn't actually until all of the uh, people on Geek Pollution wanted me to come on Primetime Crisis. I had started doing movie reviews with Logan, and he had asked me to do it, and I initially turned him down because I felt like I didn't have enough comic knowledge. And since Primetime Crisis is about primarily comic-based TV reviews and TV shows, I didn't feel like I could really bring anything to the table. Um, and that was back in spring of last year. And then as the summer season started going, he kind of kept asking me every couple weeks when we would do a movie review, like, hey, like, you want to do this? And I was like, no, no, I just really don't feel comfortable. Um, and uh, in June, I decided, well, maybe I'll try it out. I walked into a comic shop and just picked up some comics, and it's been a downward spiral ever since because I get a lot of comics now. Um, Manos wants to know what my first Star Wars collectible was. Now, I am a huge Star Wars fan now. Obviously, I'm wearing kind of a Star Wars inspired shirt, um, but growing up, I was not. I was actually a little bit more of a Star Trek fan. Um, and I've sort of fallen out of being a huge Star Trek fan, but my dad was really into Star Trek. Um, it wasn't until I met my husband that I started becoming more Star Wars because he's a huge Star Wars fan. Um, but uh, the first thing that I can remember that was Star Wars related is when episode one came out, there were a bunch of Taco Bell, like kids meal toys that came out. And I remember there was this like cube um, that was all like stickers on it and you could like kind of rotate all of the boxes so that it would sort of like fold in on itself and every time you folded it a different way it always remained a cube um it was different pictures of Anakin and I remember there was one of him as like a little kid and I think another one when you turned it it was Darth Vader and things like that and I don't I don't know why but I've always remembered having that and I was actually able to do a google search and find pictures of it online so I know that I didn't just make it up in my own brain but that is the first Star Wars collectible I remember having for sure um Eric would like to know what is a comic or character that you have yet to read but are interested in trying. Um, just recently, I've been getting a lot more into uh, just being interested in Wonder Woman. Um, I think Batman vs. Superman sort of pushed that over the edge. But back in the summer when we were doing the kind of off-season primetime crisis shows and Manos had us watch the pilot to the Wonder Woman show, I was like, I really love this character. Um, and... So I've, I've been kind of meaning to maybe start a, a book of hers, and especially with all the new DC books that were just announced, I think I might start buying her in, um, I don't know if I'll do trade or if I'll do single issues. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll see I'll see what sort of, maybe I'll ask, I'll ask the guys and see if they have any specific story arcs that I should read. But Wonder Woman definitely is one right now that I'm really interested in getting to know a little better. Rasco would like to know what, fictional character would I want to be best friends with? Um, I am a huge Lord of the Rings fan, and my all-time favorite fictional character is Samwise Gamgee, and I think I like him for all the same reasons that I think I would love to be best friends with him. He's just super loyal and hardworking, and he doesn't let you be, I don't know, he calls you on your BS, I guess. Um, he, he's, he's a fierce friend to Frodo, and I think he's just kind of everything that you would want in a loyal best friend. Um, granted, he does work for Frodo, so I guess that's a little bit different, but whatever. I would want Samwise Gamgee to be my best friend, and he could make roast chicken with his salt that he takes with him. Oh, I love Samwise Gamgee. Boil me some mashed potatoes. It'll be great. All right, and Dan would like to know, what is your favorite film made during the classical Hollywood era? Okay, 1917 to about 1960. For me, 
100%. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. I watch that movie every day after Thanksgiving. Um, up until I moved to California, I would actually watch it with my dad specifically. Um, my whole family is part of the tradition, but like it's my dad who loves that movie, and it's I've seen it every Christmas season multiple times. I definitely crack it out during like the middle of the summer sometimes and randomly. I I love it. I man, I can't even really describe why I love it so much because it's always been a part of my life. Um, I don't remember the first time that I saw it. I can probably quote the entire thing. I just, oh man, It's Wonderful Life is such a special movie to me. That's definitely the one I would pick for that. Okay, last question is from Steve. It says, what's your favorite season of Supernatural? So I think if you've been on watching the channel a while, you probably know that I'm a big Supernatural fan, but if you don't, I'm a huge fan of Supernatural. I've got a little Shrine back here. Um, now this is a tough one for me because I like different seasons for different reasons and early Supernatural is very, I mean, I don't know, very, it's a lot more serious than some of the later seasons. They start to get a little bit more silly and obviously there are silly episodes in the early seasons and serious episodes in the later seasons, but the overall feel is kind of, as time goes on, it tends to be a little bit sillier. Um, it, so I kind of think of Supernatural as two very different shows. You've got seasons one through five and then season six through now, which we're in season 11 going into season 12. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Um, but, uh, it, and it's hard for me to pick between these two. So I'm going to pick two. I know that's kind of a cop out, but I can't because I can't compare these two seasons. So for the early stuff, it is season four. Um, Ruby is one of my favorite characters and I really enjoyed the dynamic of having a character that is kind of morally ambiguous um, being friends with the boys and I really enjoyed everything that she brought to the character and my all-time favorite supernatural character is Castiel and he of course is introduced in season four and that's sort of back before we knew him very well so he's a little bit more intimidating than silly like I said it does get sillier later on and partly it's just because he's friends with the boys now as opposed to just working with them or kind of telling them what to do in season four um, but yeah, so season four, and then for the later seasons, it is season six, which I know is a divisive season among the fans. Not everybody loves that season, but I, I don't know. There's, there's something to say, I think, about the fact that we get a very different, specifically Dean, during that season, um, where he has had this entire year without Sam, thinking that Sam's dead and that he's never going to see his brother again, and kind of what he does with that, and the aftermath of the apocalypse and how do you move on from that sort of thing, which I think is a really interesting thing that we don't see a lot in media. Um, so yeah, I've always been really interested in that. And then Cass's story is pretty interesting in that one as well, because you get him being kind of shady. And by the end of the season, we realize that he's actually been dealing with some not so good stuff. So it's cool seeing a character that was so high and mighty and righteous kind of fall while still trying to think that he's doing good. I don't know. So between those two, I can't really pick. Um, all right. Those are all of my questions from the crisis team. I hope you have enjoyed getting to know me better and I hope, uh, you enjoy getting to know everyone else better. And, uh, I can't wait to see you guys soon. All right.